Florida. I have to stop every little while. I'm going to put a solar panel on it when I have to stop. Now, I bring you get my drop cord long enough. <laughs> You're on, fellas. Hey, folks. How are you? Me and Ariel Henson want to uh, welcome you to the Wild Bob and Ronnie Spin Zone. Ronnie just left amid all this confusion, but I'm sure he will return, folks, and we want to welcome you here. Uh, I believe this is... Uh, what, uh, June the 16th, 7th, I believe. 16th. It's the 16th, I'll be the 16th. Yeah. June the 16th, here of our Lord 2015. And, uh, Ariel, just what has been happening in your neighborhood this week? In the neighborhood? Yeah. It's been a trying day today, but nobody yeah. wants to hear about them well, things. Well, you were loaded one of your trucks and going up uh, the hill, uh, going up. To, 75 right past the 134 exit today. He was a grunting going up through there. Yeah, we had one that laid an egg. It, it, well, we had, you know, you name it. Had one that run over a grade stake with a front tire. Run over half, what? Half inch grade stakes, half inch rebar grade stakes. Uh, and tires come right reasonable, don't they? I believe they said that was about $600 for that tire. Right, yeah. And that one of them that was limping along Got it back in and it broke the shaft in the turbocharger. Really? Yeah, and I believe that turbocharger is $2,600 and a $900 core, so it's about $3,500. Uh, I guess we better call Ronnie back in here and make us a little loan, don't we? Well, I, th I think everybody wants to be in some kind of a business. <laughs> sure. They, uh, <laughs> I just, as they say now, that Sam Faust is going to come around and talk to everybody about their business license. I hope he well, goes over on 13th Street first, and then he goes over on the corner of Kentucky and uh, 13th Street. So, uh, I think he can get him too right off the bat there. That little old business tax thing is just a way to, I don't know what you call it. I, I kind of believe that what you ought to do is leave people alone. If they can get into business, let them try to survive. Uh, it's all you can do to survive in business just with competition. If you've got competition, it's rough. Right. And, uh... But see, the government has no competition, so they don't understand that. See, there's nobody else out there trying to uh, collect uh, business license but stand files. So, uh, you know, he has no competition. Yeah, uh... I guess, does he have a business license to collect taxes? To I don't collect know. You know, he worries yeah. me. I would just like to uh, provide the uh, hats for the different hats he wears, you know. Uh, yeah. Man, make it, make it okay, you know. Yeah, well, what's been going on in the world, Bob? Uh, well, I don't know. You know, uh, the Democrats, uh, everybody's jumping in, and they're going to shake that sack up and somebody's going to fall out that will not change one thing. And that's what they're looking for. Somebody won't change nothing except who gets the money. Well, I keep listening and try to sort out some of the stuff that's being taunted or talked or whatever else. A lot of it, I can't even understand it. When they use words... Uh, uh, or phrases like over the horizon uh over the hill yeah over the horizon or moving forward uh if i don't know what they're talking about when they say moving forward if they're talking about time time moves regardless no matter what we do well that, yeah it's going i move. guess it does of course time's one of the few things that nobody can uh, define without using the word time itself well, you lost me there, Bob. <laughs> you can't. You try to define time sometime, sometime okay. without using the word time in the definition. Uh, well, okay. time is the direction of the flow of events. That being the movement of the Earth around the Sun and orbit not, and whatever. Not necessarily. Well, it's a movement of events and objects. You it's mean, a direction. Nothing, direction happens. Time stands still. Say that again now. That's right. 
If, if nothing happens, I'd time say that's right. To feel. That's right. Because the only that. way nothing's going to happen is for time to stand still. And that would mean that well, everything we would have never, to... We will never get to the election of 2016 because nothing's going to happen between now and then. Yeah, they will. Executive actions. No, I think he's about to run his course on that. Well, I, I think Guantanamo. That's what I... you think. He ain't half done. The... Uh... <laughs> If it's anything like uh, what Bill did, it's going to be a busy, he had a busy 48 hours, his last 48 hours. He was busy hours. as um, Blanton, right Ray Blanton. Was, yeah, <laughs> sell, selling them pardons. Uh, in my opinion, when it comes up this time, I don't think they'll. it'll be 48 hours. I got a feeling it'll be for the last week or month. That Two years. <laughs> well, pardons will be worked out, all sorts of things will be worked out. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, oh yeah, they're getting our, the, they're getting our lives planned. Uh, I might have hope for another 20 years, but they got it all planned out, you know. Well, fellas, in my opinion, <clears throat> eventually, and I hope I don't see it, but I might, this country will become a country of forced labor. Oh, it's about yeah, there now. And it's just a particular who they forced to the labor. Well, I, the food. I figure the first group or profession that will become forced in forced labor is going to be the doctors. That's right. The medical will become forced labor first. That's absolutely right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's true, you know, and i tell you how real that is. I carried somebody to the doctor the other day, and uh, if I went in to check on them, I said, no, she's still in recovery. I said, why didn't y'all go cesarean rather than natural birth or the woman was 50 some years old? I said, as you always mean, I said, it's been long enough to perform natural birth. I just wondered how come you didn't go cesarean. Uh, are, are you saying that you transported somebody who was in their 50s that gave birth? No, no. Oh, okay. Well, they kept them in there long enough to oh, give birth. Oh, I got you. I see what you're saying. <laughs> okay. I, I thought there was a, an event here that was... Right, now, they uh, gave them in there long enough to give birth, and uh, they gave them a, a procedure and some shots where they could not drive. They had to have somebody right. else to drive them. Uh -huh. and, uh, this, this thing you just brought up, Ronnie, about the... Uh, this shark attack is... I don't know how to describe that, but... I own some property less than three miles from where that happened. Is that right? I wonder how these, uh, if you remember back in that movie Jaws, I believe it was, the people in positions like the mayors or whatever it was in that community flat refused to close down the beaches. Right. And I saw a little of that in this right here. Uh, and I can understand, I guess, well, look, if you go... A chance of getting eaten by a shark is about like winning the lottery. You know how many people's in the ocean right now? Ah, uh, that's no, but they say there's several. Well, there ain't many of them gonna get eat. Well, oh. let me ask you that. Okay. Do you know who played the part of Jaws? Jaws. I give up who? Was, huh? Who? The movie Jaws. You know who played the part of Jaws? Simple. It had to be Linda Lovelace. <laughs> You're talking about your confusing deep throat. <laughs> Well, the uh, I, I see what you're saying as far as uh, uh, the probabilities. The only thing I see that would be of, of a problem, and if I'm not mistaken, the majority of the people who get attacked are on, uh, well, this is something I saw. They're on surfboards or some sort of a bodyboard, and they got their hands and their feet of paddling, which appears to be natural food. We have many more people drown in North Lake than they have been eat by sharks. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, that whole uh, yeah. Oak Island is not my best, but nine, maybe 11 miles long. And, and you know, Jerry Kidd brought up a good point. I thought he <coughs> mentioned this a few years back. TVA 
They flooded 700 and something thousand acres in order to save Chattanooga, but just think of all the lives they saved. They've been more people drowned at Norris Lake, not mentioning all them other lakes in the system. They've been more drowned at Norris Lake than, than died in Chattanooga the whole time we've been a town down there. That's right, if you run the numbers. As a matter of fact, I believe there was, I'm sure, one and one somewhere else that I heard of. Yeah, they've been... They've been two in the last week or less than a week. Loudon, wasn't it? Yeah, I and guess. And there's one out there about from where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, good point. And we we kind of emphasize the point that most people get hurt and injured not on the job, but having fun. Yeah. That's that's where you're... Uh, and I believe most of the fine things that I, that's happened to me is when I was having fun. It sounded, yeah. <laughs> it sounded like this last two. I mean, I don't know... Don't know who they are, don't know anything about them, whether it was two men or a man and a woman. But they were from out of state, according to the paper. And one of them was on a, they rented a pontoon, I guess it's a pontoon boat, they rented a boat. And then one of them got on the interview with the other and drug him around and flung him off and drowned him, and he didn't have enough sense to have on a life jacket. I think there may have been a little lib. I'm just guessing that there might have been a little libation involved in this. Well. Well. He could have been drunk and got shark attack too, but it probably wouldn't have happened in Norris Lake. You think about the, the tax that that libation brought in, libation brought yeah. in. If there was any libation, I don't know where there was or not. I mean, this may have been this terrible accident where the guy just lost his life jacket and his life, mm -hmm. and maybe everything was just straight up according to the book, but it didn't sound like it. I hit the water so hard one time, skin that it tore my bathing suit off. <laughs> they had about two years ago, last year, year before last, some guy come through and they was going down the, going down the lake, wide open, and he wanted to jump out and see what oh, he could no. do, and he did, and they finally hooked him, brought him to the top too. Uh, How stupid can you get <laughs> and live? And live, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, my mom always told me not to ever go near the water until you learn how to swim. <laughs> so how do you learn how to swim without getting near the water? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was a kid. I've seen people practice fishing in the yard. Fishing or casting? Casting. Uh, I'd okay. catch as many there as I would at the lake. Yeah. The dead gum thing my, about my, that is my mama told up. me, son, don't go near the Indians. Yeah, don't. right. These, these <laughs> two little girls of mine, they, they learned to swim by about the time they could walk. We put them in the Y and they learned to swim. When I taught Elizabeth how to swim in 2001 or two, no, I said, yeah. About 2005 was when Elizabeth learned how to swim. She said she used to know how, but. She wasn't doing too good. Did you throw her in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like attempted murder to me. <laughs> yeah. No, she wasn't in water over her head. Either. Yeah. Well, fellas, there's a lot going on in the world, and I've been too busy to read on too much of it here in life a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I have heard a little bit of the speeches. I listened to part of Hillary's... Uh, I, was this her third coming out speech? No, wait a minute. Uh, Not coming out. That's a different term. It is? Okay. She ain't come out yet. She just uh, announced her uh, candidacy. Well, it now, is... if it'll get her any votes, she'll come out. Okay. Uh, is that she still... She had been a closet candidate up to then. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, buddy. Well, yeah. the... Uh, I listened to most of it, and what I could, I don't want to have to say how much of it I could stand, but anyhow, it seems to me like a lot of the people running for office think that the solution to all of our problems is take the <clears throat> possessions, wealth, or whatever from one group and give it to the yeah. other. And... I don't know. It seems to me like that kills all hey, incentive I'm on the show right to now. even I'm be, be to get out there and work and do okay. stuff. Well, uh, if people people don't understand 
economics and human behavior. The fellow ain't going to keep working if he don't get to keep what he works for. I understand that. I sure do. Or at least a, a fair portion of it. We're given, for that what we earn, we're giving up a lot of it. And, and the people who actually earn the wealth, and I'm talking about the people who work, and I guess we term work anything that people get paid for. But there's a lot of difference in being out there at 80 or 90 degrees on an old piece of equipment trying to earn a living than there is sitting in an air-conditioned office shuffling papers. I'm sure that one is... Okay, let me go back and say this. <clears throat> the people on the top who are shuffling the papers and counting the numbers, if the people on the bottom are not down there doing the poop and whatever else, you don't need the people on top shuffling the numbers because there won't be any. There won't be any money to count if the working people don't earn it. I know, but you're not going to have any changes in the system <coughs> Until the people, the business people with political power no longer have political power. They write the rules for themselves. I yeah. can understand that. They right. sure do. And, and the pe people on the bottom, you know, uh, the real bottom, uh, you know, unless they have somebody that's really inspiring them, you know, and uh, getting them to be active, which Hillary's been trying to do, with the black case, Christ was said, oh, they've been so tired so long, you know, with their uh, fake type of uh, uh, accent. She's trying to be to raise, to inspire these people where they will ask for more and more from the government. Yeah. And uh, instead of talking up somebody to go work, she's talking up somebody to go bum. Right. Yeah. From what I've <clears throat> seen of most politicians, they have no idea what they're talking about as far as the working people. <clears throat> they might go out here and walk down the street. They don't have to know. They just have to know how to manipulate the vote. Manipulate the people. And I've got a feeling that they're not going to have to manipulate them too much because with the high-tech world we're in, there's other ways to win an election other than votes. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, that's uh, always been tried here in Campbell County. It has been tried in Campbell County, and it has succeeded in other places in the last presidential election. Right. I think, I think there was a great deal of uh, uh, manipulated uh, vote tallies. Correct. They were doctored up. And this does get so far ahead of me, technology does, that I, I don't understand how it works, but I can see <clears throat> that it can be done. Uh, the hacking that went on here not long ago where all federal employees' information was uh, liberated, I guess you might say, or shared with the world. Not with the world, with those who hacked into it. Uh, all federal employees, all of their information was hacked. Uh, where does that leave us as far as what's the point of having a secret? You're only keeping it secret from those that don't have the technology to get into it. The people who have the technology to get into it, it's no longer a secret. And whenever they do this, when they hack into this, they do it for a reason. Well, I don't and know but what the people they had first given that information to were the wrong people to have it to start with. Well, <clears throat> there's another subject that I've been hearing discussed a little bit, and this is uh, our heavy armaments were, be were pulled out of Eastern Europe. I back bought some of that from Bob the other day. Some heavy armament? Okay. I bet it wasn't as heavy as what I'm talking about, though. Probably not. The, uh, my understanding was that we pulled a lot of our stuff all out of Eastern Europe. We pulled it back. And I think one of the key things that when uh, <clears throat> the president didn't know the mic was open and he told uh, whoever the dude was there, he was 
I believe he was acting president for Putin would be taking charge. And I believe he said something to the extent that after the election, he'd be far more flexible. And That's why he told Putin. Oh, well, it was Putin's representative. Right. Because yeah. Putin, I don't know whether he had taken over at that time or not, but anyhow. Don't they have a president and a, and a guy that runs the country? Wasn't this the uh, president and Putin's the guy that runs the country? Yeah, it may be. But well, anyhow, what was it, the subject, from what I could find out at that time and understand, was missiles along the border, the countries well, that border we, Russia. We, we had an agreement with uh, Poland and Hungary and everything to put up a missile defensive that's missile correct. shield. That was my and understanding. And Obama gave it up and said we're not we, uh, at the pressure of Russia. It was not an offens uh, offensive missile. That's correct. It was defensive missiles. The kind of what might come out of Iran mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe Pakistan or that area there should they at that time should the uh, uh, rebels take over. You know, at one time the rebels in Pakistan were within so, so many miles of the nuclear arm, arm, armaments that Pakistan controlled. So, well now there's talk they're trying to get these, our allies over there, are, are get, they've got real nervous about this because we're not in a position to protect them. And now they're well, they, wanting to move they, this they, armament. They, they've had the benefit of our uh, military shield uh, for 70 years since the war was over. Mm -hmm. And they've been uh, allowed to uh, uh, improve their economy in ways other than with the uh, uh, military industrial complex like we have here and yet they have not progressed as much with us providing all of their defense and we still have what and we still have uh, in excess of a hundred thousand troops in in Germany I don't know I haven't kept up on the numbers I think I, we what I was listening to is the fact now that we're trying to move this armament back in to Eastern Europe uh, and they seem to be a little bit uh, uh, in a hurry to get it done. Uh, Obama will take care of it. You know, they got 70-some thousand I-6 troops over there, and he sent 450 over there. Well, they're the JV team. Well, that's right. You don't take 450 to be the JV team. I was sure feel for those 450 and from what I'm hearing about a hundred plus a little over a hundred of them are actually there to be advisors and the rest are there to try to protect them that's from what I'm hearing right. and also I caught a whiff of something I believe I caught it either yesterday or today that China said they're uh, about to finish their <clears throat> 2,000 acre islands out there in the South China Sea and these are stepping stones. That's correct. They, uh, 2,000, 2,000 acres, and it's going to be strictly military. It, there's not going to be uh, Walmarts and IGAs built out there. It's going to be strictly military. And right. uh, come to think about it, I don't. If you build an island up in such a manner, that would be what would be considered a deep water ports because it's going to fall straight off. You bring heavy stuff in close for what it's worth. Uh, Depending on how, how tall you've stacked it. You get yeah. up there and it rolls over, you've got problems. Rolls over? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that, yeah. Might tell the whole continent. Yeah, I've heard about them islands capsizing. There was a congressman explained that to us. Yeah. How that happens. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, you know, I think Elizabeth Warren is Cherokee, and this year, this year other woman, she's a black woman. I think I'm some sort of a minority. I need a pension. You are a minority. You may not know it. <laughs> I'm one of them kind that gets. I'm one of them minorities that gets a pension. I, I know that the uh, white Anglo-Saxon. Protestant male 
it's pretty um, uh, downtrodden, but I want I want to be special enough to get me a pension. Well, I heard a little discussion on that too the other day. Uh, someone was uh, placing an, an argument to the extent that nobody is actually white. And this is out here where Juan Williams said that this year woman's pretending to be black has got a psychological problem and needs help. Yeah. Would okay. that be like Bruce Jenner? <laughs> got a psychological... Why is it that... Now, there are people who will disown their arm and say it's not theirs and they want it cut off. And they get them mental support. They get them a psychiatrist. But if a guy's got something else he wants to cut off, they just perform one of them mere whack it off and they're normal. done with him. Yeah, he's normal there, yeah. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Seems to me like the world is upside down. Huh? <laughs> yes, buddy. The, uh, it is absolutely crazy. I don't know whether it's any crazier than it's always been, and we just got more ways of finding out, or whether it's just cut loose and just going wild. If was it always this crazy? We didn't know it. We just may have not know. Maybe we've been too busy chasing the dream. We may have been too busy attention. May have been too busy worrying about the Kardashians. Yeah. I've keep hearing about them, I, and I don't know who. Somebody was telling me or asking me something about them, and I didn't know nothing about them, and I ain't wasted the time to find out about them. I'm sure it's something worthwhile. Oh, it is. I've never yeah. even tried to find out any about, uh, anything about them. What I know, I learned in passing because I sure didn't do no research. Yeah. Uh, if you was to ask people, anyone, just about it, their opinion of discrimination, and most people would say that they're strictly against discrimination. And when you come down to the uh, the situation now where you're having uh, same-sex marriages and whatever else, and if they ask for a service that you provide, that you must provide that. Now, a priest, when they request his services to perform a ceremony, if he refuses, then he is discriminated against them. That's discrimination. And I think this is going to bring up stuff as time goes on. And one segment of the, uh, I don't know which, I believe it's part of the Presbyterian. I, I was up on it here a few months ago as to how it was going and they was having votes concerning this thing. And uh, part of them, part of the presbytery, voted or agreed or whatever it was to allow same-sex uh, or yeah participate somehow in the ruling part of the church, whether that be uh, I believe the word they use is presbytery, presbytery, and so forth. There again, that's where the uh, church has become so secularized and so money-oriented because the Bible states very, very plainly that homosexual, uh, homosexuality uh, is uh, an abomination and it's a sin. And there's not hardly any way you can get around it without you take your magic marker and mark that part Nowhere out. Nowhere in the world. That's about the way you do it. Even when Joseph Smith rewrote it, uh, he included that. Right. The uh, part of the organization, and I still think it was the Presbytery that I was thinking about, agreed that the priest or the preachers or whatever, it was their, to their discretion as to whether to... Uh, uh, provide the services of marriage, say right. same such uh, couples, but that's right now. That's going to change as it goes along because somebody <coughs> is going to bring some sort of suit. In my opinion, declaring it, that it's uh, in, it's <coughs> discrimination. It's already discrimination if it go, applies to a cake 
or flowers or any other thing right up to the ceremony. And it looks to me like it gets complicated as I'll get out. Well, would you sell concrete to a lesbian couple? Sure. Well, what if they're going to spell out I love Lucy in it? Would you still provide the concrete? Yeah, I believe it would because I don't believe anywhere in the Bible it says anything about uh, uh, that part, like selling concrete or a cake. Uh, you know, I think right. you're right. I ain't okay. never seen that word now, in the Old Testament. No, I don't believe or I have. the New Testament either. But if you go on to who performs the ceremony, so I believe You're delivering the concrete. You help spread it now. Hey, I don't know why they would be so upset about who performs the ceremony. They have already consummated the union uh, before they got there. Well, that brings up all sorts of other questions, too. Well, they got medicine for consummation. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as later on, I don't believe it'll be discretion of whoever, whether it be a, a, a preacher, a priest, or whoever the head person right. is that performs these uh, ceremonies, I don't believe it'll be to their discretion as to whether to do it or not. I well, believe it. You know, as I mentioned Saturday, you know, heaven help us if the, uh, uh, our politicians decide they want to help expand our First Amendment rights, you know, like they expand our Second Amendment rights. We'll be in trouble if they decide to expand our First Amendment rights. And as uh, far as the church not being at any, uh, being able to decide what uh, services they will perform or that they will ordain or that, that they will uh, uh, say is okay, uh, it, it's less and less and less as you go uh, through the years. I know, uh, I, might, I know I've told this story before, but I was raised up in the Methodist Church. <coughs> and uh, at about the age of 14, uh, I changed church. And the reason I changed uh, churches was that the Baptist Church had a baseball team, and the Methodist <laughs> Church did not have a baseball team. So yeah, they welcomed me into the church, and I, I played for them on a Saturday. I got a couple of good hits. I may have rattled the fences there on that ballpark, and I made a couple of good defensive plays. And I thought I did real, real well. But when I went to church on Sunday with the Baptist Church, they carried me out over there in some old pond and tried to drown me. <laughs> and I said, I must have not played as good as I thought I did. Because, you know, all they did kept sousing me down. And asking you, did you feel it? Do you believe? Do you see the light yet? Yeah, do you believe? I said, I believe you're going to drown me. <laughs> yeah, Lordy. Yeah. That's somewhat of a true story, you know. Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. You know, just like I say, I we, like all, that. we always tell the truth on this show if we have to lie about it. Somewhat. But you know, no lie. I came out and saw Mill Holler today right where Ellison runs into it. And just like this woman that tried to use uh, reverse, uh, 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 well, she reversed herself and tried to break in the color barrier the backwards, I came up. Uh, riding their lane the wrong way. And uh, I turned around and looked. There about 8.30 and 9 o'clock, there was about six cars out there at Diggers, you know. And uh, I looked, and I, even though the door wasn't open, I could see Digger smiling through that door uh, <laughs> with about six cars there. It was already about 80 degrees when I come out. But they were there at some of that good uh, Digger Wilson propane. And uh, whatever they were going to do with it, I'm sure it was going to do the job, whether they were running their forklift or whether they were using it to heat their, hot, to heat their water to make uh, uh, their hot water hot or whether they were using it to grill out. Wilt, it's Wilson's propane down in Sawmill Holler at 562 544 44. 
what I said, 5444. Oh, I thought you said 5444. No, I did, that's what I said, 5444. 562, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's down to Diggers. I know where Diggers is. He'll be there tomorrow, too, folks. <coughs> and we're going to be on WLAF at 4 o'clock on Saturday. That's on the AM dial. We also will be at 100.9 on your FM dial. And if you need uh, uh, good auto parts, be sure and not to call 562-2526. Call 562-2529, and that way you will get them expedited quicker. If you need parts for your old broken down cement truck or whatever you need, just dial that number, and I'm sure that uh, uh, he, he'll come up with the parts for you. Here's what I've been looking for. Um, if it comes up, here's a guy that's proposed a way to get out of a uh, sure cake baking and stuff. Um, let me get down to the good part here. Father John Zolsdorf, a priest and blogger in Madison, Wisconsin, has come up with a thing to do. He has a solution. He arrived at this for all the lawsuits that could turn the issue completely on his head. He counsels a big yes on gay wedding request with a few promises written into the contract. And here's what he said. Tell them that the food and services will be just fine and then inform them that all the money that they pay for the services will be no donated to a traditional pro-family lobby. If it's something like catering where your employees have to be there provide services, tell them that all your people will smile, be professional, and every one of them will be wearing crucifixes and have the holy family embroidered on their uniforms. Then show them pictures of your uniforms. When the truck pulls up, speakers will be playing Immaculate Mary and show them the truck and play the music. If they're appalled, then say, oh, you would be offended by that. I'm so sorry you approached us because we're Christians, right? We are happy to provide services for you, and we are grateful that you chose to come to our Christian catering business. We just want to be of help. Then tell them that you will make out an ad in the paper to everyone who knows to let everyone know what you did with their money, thanking them by name for their business so that you could make the contribution. No one is refused service or suffers discrimination in this scenario, and the caterer's conscience is intact. Leftists, lawyers, and judges don't get to levy fines, but if gay couples want to force their lifestyle on others, it naturally flows that religious believers should push their beliefs more elaborately as well. Sounds like a winner. There's only a, there's a sentence or two I'd add to it. What is that? That is that once they signed it, yeah. that it is that you could not back out of the contract without paying the cost. Well, you have to Which, pay up front. That's what. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, and, and and I think you ought to find a way that if you want to use your contract or gay marriage, that yeah. <laughs> that you Maybe can you advertise can make, on some. You can make them some concrete boots. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard a lot about them concrete boots. Uh, seems to me like they'd be a little bit uncomfortable and hard to deal with. And uh, it's kind of like what I always said about copper thieves, I guess. Right. I think you ought to give them every bit that they can swim across the lake with. Right, yeah. Whatever they can take. Right. I don't. Is I think you ought to give them a little more. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that could happen, well, you know. I don't want the, you to give wedding, what they get away with. I want you to give a little business, more. Uh, you know, you, you could say, we perform Christian weddings and or heathen weddings. Because that's the only two you got. You got your Christian weddings between a man and a woman, or you got your heathen uh, weddings. Uh, Which is between a man and his goat. Right, yeah. Don't talk for my goats now. <laughs> <laughs> I believe somewhere along the line that I done a little research into the word heathen 
And you need to do a little research into the word goat, too. Yeah, goat. Uh, heathen is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a long time ago since third grade, but I believe that was a non-believer, which he didn't mean believe in any yeah. whatever. I guess that might be a fancy word for atheist, I guess, or no, I'm going to say a fancy word. It may be a less... I don't know. These words, they well, get so screwed you're up You're talking anymore. about goats. You heard about these two guys riding out to the uh, countryside and this boy was talking about how lonely he was and everything. He said, well, nowadays you can have any type of marriage you want to. He says, there's a big bunch of goats out here. He says, why don't you uh, uh, go out there and pick your one out and take the goat home with you? So, uh, hold on a second, honey. So, uh, he did, he stopped the car and he went up there and he grabbed him a goat and brought it back there and put him in the back seat. And his buddy just started laughing and laughing like all get out. He said, what are you laughing at? So you told me to go up there and get one of them goats. He said, yeah, but I might have known you picked out the ugliest one in the herd. <laughs> hey, I'm on the show, baby. Uh, okay, okay, I will, okay. They, they was. Let me ask a question, gentlemen. <laughs> this kind of come to me out of the blue or somewhere. Blue. Maybe a blue dress oh, or whatever. Know. I don't know. Okay. But let me ask you a question. When, you don't want me to answer it, Bobby. Well, it's a question to think about. And for everybody wants to think about something, I'll give you something to think about. And my brain hurts when I think. I believe I'll quit. Well, let, let's just say that Hillary has won the election. And she's sitting. Hillary, in, she won the election. Yeah, and she's sitting in the ovary office. Okay. Behind this big in fan. In the what office? Ovary office. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> oh, okay. But anyhow. She's a little old for that. Is my pronunciation may be off a little. But anyhow, you know where I'm talking okay. about. Uh, I could say the office of where the. Anyhow. Did she have a credenza there full of cigars? Well, I'm getting to that. That yeah, may be. Okay. Let me let me add to it then. She gonna make let, her guys wear blue dresses. Let's say she's sitting there at the desk, <laughs> making one of these your world-shaking decisions. What do you think is going to be going through her head while she's sitting there at that desk? That husband Bill has agreed or admitted to using it so profusely I'd for different. I'd say that she's been thinking uh, husband aside. A what? Husband aside. Oh. You got fratricide and patricide and homicide. Infocide and whatever. Mat yeah. Matricide and this is husband aside. Well, you know, it seems to me like that there'd be something going through her head other than the good of the country. Well, she might be put him on the same list that Vince Foster was on. Okay. Well, uh, let's say that he come in there smoking a cigar. That would really set things off, wouldn't it? I believe that uh, you probably would blow her top. Well, you know, knowing Bill, he would probably go in there and he'd probably look at that desk and he might start singing, Precious memories. How they linger. <laughs> How they ever flood my soul. Well, I heard that, uh, now I don't know whether... Obama done it or not, but I heard that uh, he and the Queen redid the, everything there, and that Bill put in a request that he wanted that desk. Well, they tried to take furniture home with them when they left before. So they maybe took all the debuts off the typewriter. So yeah. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't get enough furniture, so they're, they're going to come back for more. Well, I don't know. Wasn't that desk supposed to have belonged to some? high-ranking presidential president years well, you know ago. old Bernie Sanders has been as, as crazy as he is he's been kind of uh, uh, having more people show up at his uh, rallies than Hillary has at hers well I like I say I listened to her speech <clears throat> and I tried to see as much of the uh, audience as I could and it seemed to me like that it was a staged event that, oh, most uh, definitely. All this stuff is staged. Even the, uh, there is, uh, well, she hadn't taken any questions up till 
the other day somebody I believe asked her what her favorite color was I believe and she, I don't think she said blue but uh, all this stuff is staged if you just look at the audience you can tell it's staged it seems like most of the people there are not really interested in what's being said it's just that they catch the cue as to when to shake their flag and yell it seems yeah. to me like most of them are preoccupied. What, what's the big time uh, magician David, what's his name? Copperfield. Copperfield. Yeah, David Copperfield. I think he is handling uh, Hillary Clinton's PR. Well, yeah, it's, uh, and I believe, I see about the same thing in a lot of the others, <clears throat> no matter which side of the coin they're on, it's the same coin. It don't seem to me like people are really very much interested anymore i think no but you got you got this whole horde of, and i would say horde of people i don't know whether you ever see this advertisement this uh a game of war where you know they all this hordes of people are coming at them and they build this fort you know and it pops up all of a sudden well you don't know how many hordes of people live in these northern cities that are going to go vote for Hillary and probably vote two or three times as you alluded to a while ago, you know, uh, and uh, then the voting will be you purged. To that. Will be purged of any votes that don't go well, for Hillary. We don't do no alluding so, around uh, here. You know that they're working on that right now. You know, and see, it, it, it it's not as simple as it was when we had hanging chads. You know, hanging chads. Yeah, hanging hanging chads. But see, the Democrats knew they lost that uh, before it was ever announced because they started it suing before the election was even over. The working people out here are the ones that have built this country. <clears throat> and it's a state of mind to where that you can, and I, like I say, the American dream where you can chase it. People can argue it any way you want to, good, bad, or indifferent. But right now, the working people, yeah, the, so much, well, let me put it this way. Right now, local government, along with federal and ever kind of else, anybody can get in your pocket, is taking money from you, the working right. people. And it, uh, whenever we listen to what these, uh, candidates are talking about most of them all they're actually saying is is we want to fix it so you can work more is what they're saying we want to extend the deadline for paying federal taxes well the uh right now i, I looked at something the other day i was <clears throat> i made mention about our right here local and i read that there's an article in the paper about it, about the sunday uh summer lunch Lunchbox program, I believe is what they call it. And we're, that's not just here. That seems to be everywhere. Uh, to where that we're feeding the every child. Not Now, they're going to say the unprivileged or whatever. They do that, but they're feeding everybody. <clears throat> and I, Anybody that wants, if you're between the age of 2 and 18, and I made the comment... For them two-year-olds, if they can ride their tricycle down here to school in the morning, they got parking for tricycles. Right. You know the tax money is what pays it. Well, let me show you something. It kind of bothered me a little bit. And then I got to thinking about it. That's not our money because we don't have the money. We're borrowing the money to do this. Chinese are feeding us. No, yeah. Well, but let's think about it. Think a little further down the road. These kids are sitting there having a good meal and a good time and whatever, but they don't have enough forethought, and nobody's telling them, and I can understand all that, uh, but they're going to be paying for that meal that they're eating probably ten times over when they become of age because the money we're borrowing for them to have a good meal today and whatever else, we're going to pass that bill on to them. Well, We're not going to pay it. We can't. There's one institution. Nobody. Go ahead, Ron. There's one institution in this county that does not require taxpayer money and provides a great service. They drive around these little off-color orange ambulances, and it's called Vital Care, and they're good people to deal with. 
You know, uh, everybody knows how old I am, you know, 39 and mm -hmm. holding. But nobody, very few people in this country have any intestinal fortitude anymore. That's called guts. They have no uh, uh, self-reliance, you know. I could, if I wanted to at my age, it'd bring me my meals. Absolutely. Meals on wheels. You Five, know. six, two, nine, three, seven, oh, and they'll haul you to the hospital. Right. <laughs> Again. Yeah. But now, just like any business, vital care included, they're paying. They're not taking, they're paying. They're producing jobs and whatever else. And I don't know how many employees they got, but anybody out here that if they have one employee, or if they work by themselves, I don't care if they're self-employed or whatever, if they're earning money and not taking money, they're supporting everything else. But the point I'm trying to get back to is, these children, and I think everybody should eat. I don't think a child should go hungry or whatever else. I think mommy and daddy ought to think that's, about that that's before the point. they birth these young This too. is the point. Uh, I made a joke to a guy one time about something, and he said I didn't have none of the, do none of the expert, and I didn't do none of the fighting. And he said, I ain't getting involved in it. Now, we the working people out here, and like I say, if you go far enough, we're not going to be paying for it. <clears throat> These young'uns that's coming up, are, this bill is going to be passed on to them. Oh, sure. They're going to be paying that bill. They may think that it's free. It's a free dinner today. They won't be the ones paying. Well, I heard another guy make a comment. And I asked the question about our national debt, where we're coming up with all this money and whatever. I said, how are we ever going to pay it back? And the gentleman said, we don't intend to pay it back. For some reason, I see a problem in that. If there's countries out there and people or whatever, anyone who's providing, buying our uh, paper, our bonds, I believe that they intend to be paid back sooner or later, one way or the other. As long as we and pay the interest, they're, they're happy. Okay, as long as we pay the interest. Eventually, okay, that, that goes back to another aspect. As long as we can print the paper, and don't even print the paper. Yeah, as long as we some can... Some tree has to give up its life. Just, as add, just add another zero or two on the... As, uh, as long as we can put down a number and I don't believe, I believe a number is kind of like a magnetic field. I don't believe you can wire the stupid thing out. You can use a number as many times as you want to. And as long as the dollar is used as the measured stick or medium of exchange, we're going to have it made. But I think the world will eventually wake up. And they're well, going to say instead of this I, piece I of really, paper... I really doubt it. You know, one of the reasons... Uh, Obama is not hesitant to pull money out of Medicaid and Medicare. You know why? He don't mind pulling it out? Because he does not care if all the old people die off. Because well, they're the only ones that remember how it was before uh, he came into being. I'm glad we ain't old, ain't you? Yeah, I'm glad, they, I'm glad I'm in my second childhood. Back a few years ago, the TVOA owed a tremendous amount of money. And that's what all they did was say, hmm, we don't owe it no more. They wrote it off. They just wrote it off. Now, I'm sure that the United States government or the Treasury somewhere is how they got that money, which enabled them to write it off that way. But somewhere down the road, it all costs the taxpayers or the ratepayers. Whenever billions of dollars go away like that, somebody's going to have to, have to produce the goods and services that puts it out there. But as long as we can do what we're doing right now, as long as we can borrow the money, and it's my intention we have to pay it back, but some people say we'll never pay it back. We never have to, or never intend to. And all we got to do is print a little bit more to keep paying the interest. But somewhere I see a problem with it. I think somewhere along the line, we're going to hit the wall. Well, what's happened for so many years, you had an expanding economy here. 
and you, you we expand it to money supply, which in turn was worth less and less. And uh, as a result, uh, when we get around to paying it back, uh, it won't really even uh, be anywhere close to what you actually got, you know. Uh, you pay, pay it off with that funny no, no, money. In other words, know? yeah, I see what you're saying. Let inflation pay your bill. Yeah. My opinion in a lot of this is... That's what I'm going to do. I think, like China, if the country of China, not the individuals, but the country, buys our bonds or whatever, or puts a largest sum of money, and I'm talking about hundreds of billions, they're wanting something to back it up other than a piece of paper. Well, see, uh, China and so many of your third world well, countries are York. making so much money by manipulating their currency and taking advantage of us because we are not up to date enough to stay ahead of them. And uh, no telling how many billions of dollars they uh, suck out of our economy by manipulating the currency that they have, you know. Right. And uh, that's something I think uh, we need to make changes on as well as on our IRS structure. I think you need to go to the fair tax. That's uh, what I, really I think. Do. I think the fair tax is the solution to a lot of our problems. It ain't no, going to happen, though. It ain't going to happen, but it would put us on the right path. You know, the other day when I heard that our United States government had been hacked, the first thing that went through my head is they ought to have that their ID protection thing from, you know, every yeah. time you turn it on, they're going to protect your ID. Right. Maybe the government should have protected their ID right. with one of these uh, protection companies. Right. That's what they need, yeah. Yeah, we, we we know whenever they're tapped into you or whatever. Well, you yeah. know, uh, old Eric Snowden, uh, I think, brought about some of the best changes I've seen in this country uh, since he exposed so many of the abuses that the federal government was uh, uh, perpetrating on the American citizens. And... Uh, well, we're going to have to quit perpetrating on American citizens for this little session and start right. perpetrating on our way home. We have right. taken well, advantage you, of you long enough. The, We've been to your ear. You need when any. can they see this wonderful show again, Bob? What? When can they get a, another show, another dose of this wonderful show? I'm going to get another dose of it. Uh, if you want to back up on the archives, you can catch the ones in the past. Or if you want to wait until Saturday... Uh, we will be on uh, WLAF 1450 AM, WLAF 100.9 FM. We will be on UGTV.TV as well as uh, uh, WLAF 1450.com. He got a pretty good memory for a senile 39 year old. Senile 39 year old. I, I can't understand how he can remember all them numbers. I can't remember what the mayor's office number is. Yeah. And I can't only find my way home if it wasn't for the marks I put on the corner. I hope I pointed. I hope I pointed my vehicle the right way. <laughs> you can't get out. Why? <laughs> Go look.